Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jeff and this is the Stuff I Made channel. Today's video is about the sideboard with the secret compartment. So first of all, from rough sawn timber, I had a, a, a selection of poplar, or as it's called in the UK, tulip wood. And I milled that down. I also had some scrap oak that was gifted and some other uh, ruko, um, I believe it's called, that I used to make the carcass of the um, sideboard with. And here you can see me just cutting to length the pieces and checking for square that the front piece is the face frame. Now I just label them up so I don't get too confused. I have to apologize for some of the video quality. I uh, mistakenly left some of the neon lights on. So apologies for that. Um, now I'm just putting the angles on the leg and marking up for the, the inward angle as well. And here you just see me taking those pieces off. And to even them up, I just clamp them down and then sand um, just to tidy up those bandsaw cuts. So you can see the four legs there with the angled cuts. So the joinery for the most part is dominoes. Um, so I've just got my homemade MFT type table to support the stock. And I'm just plunging the dominoes that I require and I'm using some spaces to do reference marking so that I get the same spacing on each side of the face frame and I'm using um, some stock plywood birch ply there um, I think a six and a nine mil piece just also I can't remember the dimensions just to do an offset of the dominoes so they're all consistent and I'm just referencing where the, the spacing for each of the drawers on the face frame as well. I'd rather do this than just mark up and trust it out. I'd rather reference from actual cut stock or um, pieces of wood. So yeah, just plowing through the dominoes, making sure I keep a track. And, and now this is the uh, rear frame. And those three pieces in the middle there are so that the front pieces on the face frame will have somewhere to line up um, the draw runners later and you'll see and these, these pieces I'm cutting are for the outside draw runners. I'm just marking up the center line where I'm going to plow um, a trough using the router table, which you've seen me doing now. And this trough will house some panels, which I'm just using plywood for. The whole thing will be painted, um, as you'll see later on. Oh, the video quality on this is terrible. Some of it gets better, but sorry about that again. Um, so yeah, I'm just checking the panel size there and then cutting the panels. And again, I just used whatever stock I had. So you can see some oak in there, you can see some ply. And as the whole thing's gonna be painted, so I know I probably could have made this back a bit, a bit simpler, but I like the idea of um, having these three pieces in the middle. That's just a design feature, but also having the benefit of using them to line up for the draw runners. So just getting ready for a dry fit of the side panels, just to make sure um, it all goes together and it's square but also so that I can work out where I'm going to put the panels so you can see me do the dado troughs for the panels and I'm just using a scrap piece just to test the exact width and then just adjusting the fence using the micro adjuster and locking it down and there you can see how, how it's set and I just creep up on the depth each pass and now I'm just cutting the panels to length. The final sand before I'm ready to glue up each of the side panels. And then I'm just using a block plane taking off um, equal passes off each corner of the legs and the rails. So 
And so on to glue up now. Um, do each of the side panels first. Putting in, in advance, I'm putting in the rails that will be used for the runners, for the draw slides, sorry. And because on the face frame, I don't have um, edges to it, the legs form the edges. That was a design feature that I wanted. It makes it the whole glue up a little bit more complex because there's nothing to support um, those loose pieces. You'll see later, it gets a bit fiddly. So each of the panels is, um, side panels is glued up, Check just checking that it hasn't gone off square. And I'm very pleased with how that turned out. And I think I'm starting here with the back panel now, just getting this tested. The dry fit. Now, because I uh, marked, referenced and marked all my center lines on both the, the top stretches and the rails, I'm just using a, you saw me using a mallet there and a little piece of wood just to shift those um, left and right, just to make sure they were square and all lined up. And now, here you can see that I'm just into gluing that panel up and you see me just tapping, tapping things across. And I'm just making certain that the reference lines match up. It just gives me an I'm certain that they're all exactly in the right place then. Look at that terrible glue squeeze out there. Fortunately, it's all getting painted. This is um, where it starts to get a bit fiddly now. The back frame, the two side panels, and the front front face frame all have to go in at the same time. And, as you, and unfortunately, I'm so focused on getting this all together that um, I don't, you don't really see me working too much on the face frame. So um, like magic, you'll see it all just suddenly appear. But um, yeah, it was very fiddly. I, I struggled with this to be honest. So now you'll see what I mean by not having side pieces to the front face frame and relying on the legs and this is what makes it difficult because I've got that middle section supporting the whole thing and really only when I put the two end panels on does it start to have any support. Um, I'm fortunate in the sense that um, because I've marked all the center lines on the rails and the stretchers, that I can um, just use a mallet and tap them across gently. And now, this isn't clamped up properly yet, but it's, it is um, pushed in, and I'm just tapping with a mallet and checking for square and tapping with a mallet to move those, those um, pieces across. I don't know if you see me going up and up and across, and you can just see a pencil line there. After a quick sand, the next job will be to put in the centre rails for the draw runners, and you'll see that in a second. The easiest way to fix these was to use pocket holes. I thought it was going to get a bit complicated to try and do dominoes and include them during the initial glow up. So what I've done is got two lengths of wood there leaning on the outside rails um, so that they're all at exactly the same height and then just using some clamps to hold in the, the pieces of wood, the centre rails there and you can see the pocket hole screws where I'm just putting them in. Yeah, and here you can see probably the technique a little bit better. Now, originally, um, I was going to join the top just using um, some biscuit slots and some sort of Z-shaped brackets, but later on, I decided to that that top area would be a good space for a secret compartment. And if you stay and watch the second part of the video, which will come next week, because I have all the footage, 
you'll see that secret compartment. So here I'm just making um, some paint stands out of a couple of screws and a small piece of wood just to raise this off the, off the floor while I give it its initial coat of paint. Yeah. So other than painting the carcass now, I think that's it. I'll stop there for the first video. Like I said, next week will be the, the second and final part of the video, so do check back. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please subscribe so you don't miss um, future videos. I've got uh, quite a few more videos coming out in short shrift, a few furniture builds and some workshop projects. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching and see you soon.